This is our hospital. We work there. And you know, Norway is a socialistic country. They don't like, everything is free there. Medicine, education, everything. So the government is make, making sure that we are aging healthy so that we don't spend much money on the food, uh, so on medicine. So it's very important that the disease process before it starts, we affect much, much earlier. That's why the nutrition is a part of medical education in Norway in order to enhance the health of the citizen. Anyway, I'm not a microbiologist. I'm by training a <coughs> cardiologist, but I work on platelet last 20, 30 years. And working, I'll share something very interesting to you. And then I'm, I'm telling you, I'll tell you that how the microbes can be exploited in order to uh, stabilize the cardiovascular health of the elderly. Anyhow, let's go to the, this slide. And I'll not take more than 15 minutes, I'm not sure. <coughs> uh, the cardiovascular disease, this fact is still a big enigma. There are 50% we know, like uh, cholesterol, high blood pressure, aging, etc., etc. But a lot of things we don't know. Because the sudden death in, uh, uh, in a sportsman, a cardiac death, we don't know how, why it happened. It happens. And it also happens in, in a different population, and though the risk factor is not very, very well documented. But if you look at the Framingham study, there is showing very clearly that cholesterol may not be the only marker. There are places that there are cardiovascular things happen, uh, they have some normal cholesterol levels. And also it's a geographical. If you go to Mediterranean countries, they may have high cholesterol levels, obesity, etc., smoking, but they are quite okay. So something is geographical there. Could be dietary lifestyle and could be microbiota that I'll come into that. And if you look at uh, as a uh, clinical nutritionist, we would, would like to see the patient much earlier before the biomarkers have started to develop. Not that the pharmacological situation when somebody has high cholesterol level, high blood pressure, etc., probably don't have much thing to do, only drug interaction. So we are going back to the early biomarkers, how it can be really challenged, how can we know. There's a lot of omics are coming. But interesting player is now coming, the, the microbiota into this. Because if you look at the epidemiological studies, they clearly show that the consumption of fruits and vegetables actually lowers the incidence of cardiac events. But if you look at uh, their level of cholesterol, etc., it is not much changing. So that fruits and vegetables are doing something else other than the classical, one working on the classical risk factors. And Walter Ouellet, uh, he suggested that if somebody takes fruits and vegetables, obviously you take less fat, and obviously you take more of antioxidant, polyphenol, blah, 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 that might be helping. But emerging concept is coming that the cardiovascular event started much, much earlier than we think. Even if you look at the cardiac babies in Italy, the babies, when there is a pathology is done, there already plaque is there. So, there, is, there are two things I'll be discussing. One is the hyperactive platelet, and then I'll come to trimethylamine oxide, the contribution from microbiota, which actually having a, we have a big problem with it. Now, platelet main is a very simple cell, but it's very complicated. Its life is 10 days. We have 10 billion or more platelets. It's like a reconnaissance flight, searching over all over the blood vessel network. And if it sees any discontinuity in terms of cutting cartier blood vessels or atherosclerotic plaque or not uniform uh, endothelium, then it tries to react. It becomes hyperactive. And this hyperactivity of platelets contributes, is a very important mediator of atherosclerotic processes. That is a lifelong process. At the same time, the hyperactive platelets are involved in cardiac events. So there are two things happening here. The hyperactive platelet that you see, generally it should be very shiny and very nice uh, uh, cell, but it gets activated. Because of activities like hyperlipidemia, <coughs> obesity, diabetes, smoking, insulin resistance, you name it, even the, uh, the, the microparticles, uh, 2.5 microns, the study showed in Brazil, that can activate platelets by itself. So platelet activation is a part of life process, and when platelets get activated, that, we, that, is, that then it can secrete so many molecules, all these nasty molecules that can be contribute, that can contribute atherosclerotic processes when you have a normal or non-expressed 
cardiovascular disease. But if somebody has already cardiac problems, blocks, etc., this platelet can activation can lead to cardiac events. But the question is, and if you look at this, sorry, before I go there, the endothelium surface also get activated. The rolling of the blood cells, blood flow is disturbed, and blood is a fixotropic fluid. If the blood flow is is, 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 is less and less, it gets it to get more, the, the cell particles are, are actually dropping there, and the, and the platelet sheds membrane. Platelet membrane shedding is a big issue in cardiac problems, deep vein thrombosis, etc., etc. And platelet also contribute hypertension, and that no blood pressure medicine can take care of it. If you look at the right side, the vessel constriction is a different mechanism that involving a nervous system, and that can produce and can cause vessel constriction. But if in theory your vessel is quite okay, then a lot of pyrogenic receptors are actually relaxing by producing nitric oxide, endothelial relaxant factor, etc., etc. So we have a lot of problems when platelets get hyperactive. But under these conditions, the platelets get very hyperactive. And I put a new one, the blood level thymethyl amine nitric oxide, that is a contribution from some uh, microbiota. Now, the platelet has a redundant pathway of gate activation. And one of these uh, important pathways is expression of glycoprotein 2B3A, that is the receptor for primogen platelet, platelet aggregation happens. And if you look at all these aggregating agents, uh, collagen, epinephrine, etc., they all work, work through the phospholipase activation, arachnic acid release, and then thromboxane A to B2 comes, and that is the most important to bring the glycoprotein 2 b 3 together so that the platelet presentation interaction can go through fibrogen receptor. But if you look at thrombin, thrombin can also directly activate this receptor. So even if you take tons of aspirin, when the, the, the plug is broken, the thrombin will be generated by extrinsic pathway and then can activate and aggregate the platelet. And aspirin is no use to that. And, and also important thing is that the under, under this condition, like collagen, etc., this uh, aspirin might be working. And yet, 30% of us here are resistant to aspirin. It can be more, but 30% people, aspirin simple don't work. And doctor doesn't take care of it, whether this aspirin or L, what you call it, propidegrol acid is working or not. But we check, and also other people check, 30 to 35% people don't respond at all to aspirin. Now, Recently, as the Professor Ganglia was saying, older people, yes. They, people are getting much more older and they're taking aspirin. But FDA say that you cannot take aspirin as a primary prevention. And there are a lot of stories if you follow recent articles uh, and then newspaper saying that aspirin fails in a lot of cases. Then what is the solution? We have active platelet. We have uh, for the people who are sitting there for a long time, young people, and these the platelet hyperactivity leads to atherosclerotic processes, and we cannot take aspirin because the side effect and also 30% resistance. So I was interested to find out uh, natural sources of anti-platelet. And we looked at all the fruits, vegetables available uh, while I was working at the Rawit uh, temporarily, and we found that tomato has a very, very potent anti-platelet factors. And there are hundreds of compounds, they're water soluble, and they work, uh, they also inhibit thrombin induced aggregation. We have tons of papers published from American Journal of Clinical Nutrition to European Journal, etc., etc. And this is the only slide I'm showing that if you take uh, that extract or two tomatoes, you can see there is a drop of 30% of platelet aggregation. And we don't want more than that, then the bleeding problem would be there. And this product is the first product in European Union got approval from the European Food Standard Agency out of thousands of applications because we have more than 10 human trials, we have a lot of mechanistic studies, they said all human, and we know disease people who are included in the trial so that it can be used for normal, healthy people to maintain the health. That is the definition of functional food. Now, the question is, I was talking of trimethyl amine oxide. It is a very dangerous molecule, as uh, <coughs> Dr. Onurat Rupert exp expressed in his talk. It can come from red meat to carnitine, choline, etc. And then that micro, some of them got to micro, they convert to trimethylamine. And then it goes to the liver with the help of the flavine monoxide, oxygenase, it produces trimethyl amino oxide. And these elevated levels is shown 
that it can increase the thrombotic potential, it can activate the platelet within substimulus uh, ADP or, uh, or, uh, or, or epinephrine concentration, and dietary choline, gut microbe, and are linked to thrombotic potential. I'll show you some of the data. And microbial transplantation shows that thrombosis potential can be reduced by who can reduce the TMO. And there is a study done, a lot of uh, uh, meta-analysis done. It's showing that circulating level, circulating level of trimethyl amino nitric oxide is a very important risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And it is not major in the blood. There is no treatment for that. But it is, it does a lot of damage is that. How it does it? If you take uh, choline, creatinine from red meat, etc., then it, 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 <coughs> it is converted to trimethylamine, uh, and then it, it, it goes to bacteria, bacteria convert to trimethylamine, and then trimethylamine goes to the liver. With the help of enzyme, it is produced trimethylamine oxide. That is doing all sorts of things. It can be involved in diabetes development. It can have a problem with kidney and it leads to atherosclerotic, and it increases uh, platelet hyperactivity, and it produces a heart attack and metabolic syndrome. So it's very important that how can it handle trimethylamine? And it is showing that its mechanism is mostly in the suppression of reverse cholesterol transport, and also it increases the forward cholesterol transport, and it is uh, also uh, actually regulating CD uh, scavenger receptor, CD36, and it is also reduced the bile acid synthesis and so many things. But the most important being a platelet man, it actually activating platelets and increasing the membrane shedding of the platelet. That is a very important for us. And we are contributing uh, how this uh, TMO, if you look at the lower part, that is involving in platelet activation. In my lab at the moment, we are working in this area that how TMO is actually activating the platelet, normal platelet, into hyperactive. And the role uh, of this is, seems like that uh, it is a very important risk factor, especially for the Western diet people, because they take a lot of red meats, and that, part, uh, that has the choline, etc., and that contribute TMA production. Now, if you look at uh, the, how the TMO can be actually uh, controlled or regulated, you can uh, go at A, B, and C. It is a dietary precursor. You take less of uh, egg. Egg has a lot of choline, etc. And red meat, that way you can uh, reduce. And also you can target liver flavin monoxide, uh, monooxygenase, that also can reduce. And B is uh, by dietary precursor and TB producing bacteria and TB modulating bacteria. That is not my field, but we are working with a big company to find out how to do that. And then, of course, genetic factors is there, and liver enzyme capacity is important. So there are three tar places that you can actually use uh, to reduce the TMO. And, sorry, I'll not go with this one. And it is shown very clearly that if you take red wine, red wine got reserv reservatrol, actually that can change the microflora and can reduce the TMO. That is published paper. It is showing that some of the uh, flavonoids can do the job. Uh, actually, to lower by some mechanism, mostly by changing the microflora, but it is not very clear yet. So, but some of the, uh, uh, it is shown very clearly, is a PhD study done in the uh, um, Netherlands. They showed that some of these uh, phylum, they have capacity to increase TMA production or reduce the TMA production. So we could, we could use this information in order to design the probiotic and prebiotic in handling this issue. And there are other three uh, uh, probiotics uh, actually named here. They also have a very favorable effect on TMO production and also ultimately to cardiovascular risk factor. So the question is that the combination of uh, prebiotics and probiotics, and if you can find the right kind of combination, then we can address TMA synthetic activity, or then when the TMAO is produced by the liver, it can be degraded. And recently, that is a very initial study, and uh, showing that this bacteria L. retruri can have some effect, and conjugated polyphenols. The conjugated polyphenols are very important. They are not absorbed well in the intestine, they go to the colon, 
and then they can change the microflora. So recently we have a very small study done with the fruit flow. Fruit flow is containing a lot of uh, flavonoids, mostly conjugated uh, flavonoids and all other compounds. And with the, with the presence of some certain bacteria, I cannot tell much because it's under patent application. And then it, showed, it is shown that it can in, uh, lower the TMO production in the plasma and also it lowered the platelet reactivity. So that what we're targeting at, initial pathology, not the uh, end pathology, that the platelet hyperactivity, how it can be tamed by using the symbiotics, that is the uh, fruit flow or other kind of uh, polyphenols with the help of um, bacteria that we know that some are uh, increasing, some are reducing, and that way we can reduce the atherosclerotic processes that is going on throughout our life so that we can reduce the CBD events. And we have several publications in this area. If you're interested, you can go there. And I have so many people working in my life. Thank you very much.